good evening, and uh, I know you want to go for dinner quickly, but uh, I'll try to keep you awake for a few more minutes. I'd like to thank the, the organizers again for inviting me, and like Ambassador Gooseby, I haven't been here for the past 16 years. I remember quite well this conference that was absolutely terrific. The weather was just gorgeous. And also I have personal memory because that was my first journey with my six-month-old child. And you can imagine that the nights were also as busy as the day. So when I left my uh, son this morning at home, like a full-grown uh, typical adolescent of 16 years, I could have a historical perspective of my memories of, of Vancouver. So I also take you in a historical perspective here uh, on, on, on the trials by reminding us that it has been about 12 years during which we have constructed this hypothesis uh, of treatment for, for prevention. Uh, and then, uh, thanks to Ruben Granish, who is here, and, and others, the models came and all of a sudden it became clear and exciting that we were in the, in the right uh, direction. Certainly at the beginning of this period, the Swiss statement, the WHO 2009 consultation, uh, opened a new uh, era, uh, but certainly the models could not answer uh, everything, and we, like uh, others, uh, said at that time that we desperately needed uh, to new data and, and, and confirming data, uh, rather than just simply look at what, what, we, what we had. So that's why this, this phase 2011 started uh, to, to really draw uh, conclusions and formulate recommendations. And I put it 2011, 2016, because this is roughly the frame in which the trials are going to come out uh, now. So uh, my first general comment is that uh, for all uh, the researchers who are embarked today in this kind of research, uh, I think the general hypothesis is the same is that ART is potentially more efficacious than any other of the previously evaluated uh, methods, and it's part of a combined prevention uh, approach. So there is not a single research here that is not saying uh, this in, in my view. Um, so to really map uh, what, what we have, I've used three uh, sources of information. Uh, the first one on the top was uh, the, what was said at the consultation in 2009. Uh, then, uh, the, the enormous work done by Ruben and colleagues uh, and published about, uh, two, about two years later uh, on, on, on in current HIV research. And finally, what Wafa uh, extracted uh, about a month ago at, at Croy. Uh, and, and so, if you look at what we uh, had in mind two and a half years ago, it looked like there will be five randomized trials, one that was ongoing at that time, HPTN052, three that were starting to be designed uh, in, in lower income countries and one at the design stage. So that was, that was not a lot, uh, considering the excitement that was uh, going around this, uh, this, this topic. However, two years later, uh, uh, I mean, the situation was completely uh, different and Ruben and colleagues were able to map 25 uh, randomized uh, trials one of them had been published just, just before, the HPTN-052, but 24 were considered at the design stage, including 10 in Africa. And as, uh, as uh, Gottfried said earlier, this is very exciting, uh, and you may wonder whether this is too much uh, or, or not enough, but that's certainly a, a lot, and you may wonder what will be uh, this meeting in two years from now, in three years of now, from now, if all these trials uh, get really uh, out. Uh, in addition, Ruben uh, in, uh, identified 26 non-randomized studies ongoing and planned uh, on, on, on the TASP issue. So that's really uh, enormous. Uh, however, uh, WAFA uh, last month um, was able to really uh, select and, and show us that five trials were really uh, planned. And basically what I tried to do is contact a few uh, of the trialists or the few uh, researchers that have been listed in, in, in these uh, and try to see what was really uh, realistically on the agenda uh, now or in a foreseeable future. So I'll try to, to, to do this briefly. 
Um, uh, of course, there is no studies uh, with looking at selected individuals without randomization. That's no longer uh, the issue. Uh, but there are a few studies in which individuals are, are randomized. Uh, of course, we know that one uh, and not the, the, the worst one was published. Now it's uh, HPTN052. But there are two in the same category uh, that Carl uh, presented for one of them uh, earlier. Uh, one of them is the 12136 INRS Temprano trial in Cote d'Ivoire, which basically will, uh, is comparing uh, uh, patients or subjects uh, who are either uh, initiating treatment immediately between 350 and 800 CD4, or is a deferring uh, uh, initiation of treatment uh, between 250 and now uh, 300, uh, 350. And there is also a double randomization with INH uh, prophylaxis. And main outcome are mostly on the clinical uh, side. So just to let you know that this trial has almost completed enrollment with an already 1,970 uh, patients uh, enrolled. Uh, and so the next two years will be uh, critical in terms of uh, looking of uh, outcomes, uh, which are uh, in terms of uh, very early uh, treatment. And as Carl uh, said earlier, the other trial in the same category is the START uh, study, uh, which is randomized also with more than, more than 500 CD4 versus uh, three, 300. Uh, an enormous uh, undertaking uh, for f to enroll 4,000 uh, subjects. Uh, the enrollment is expected to finish by the end of this year, although I've been told it's, uh, it's maybe a slightly uh, longer, and so the timeline is slightly longer than the Temprano uh, trial that I just described uh, to you. So the question is, will these trials really look at the, the question that I am putting here on this slide? What would happen if the epidemic is, uh, if even more infected pe people are treated? And the answer is no, this is not the kind of study that will uh, address uh, this uh, particular issue. So we need to look at it uh, differently. So going back to the same table, uh, we can have studies with no randomization, but looking at groups of individuals that will probably address uh, this question. There has been already very successful studies, like the one in British uh, Columbia, uh, published by Julio. Uh, but certainly the most uh, fascinating and recent one is the one that was um, reported briefly by uh, Gottfried uh, earlier. This is the one by Frank Tanser. Um, pop combining population-based uh, HIV incident cohort and ART uh, coverage. Uh, in this uh, area, they, they are managed to have extremely good uh, HIV surveillance data on uh, negative repeat testers, so they are able to, to, to measure uh, incidence and to basically to do geolocalization of uh, individuals. And at the same time, in the same area, uh, ART was introduced in 2004. Uh, this is the spread, progressive spread of ART in this uh, sub-district uh, uh, of KwaZulu-Natal. You can see it very, very precisely. Uh, and, and the beautiful uh, conclusion that the investigators uh, reached uh, and presented at Croy for the first time is that the, more the, the higher the coverage on the right-hand side, the more likely, uh, or the less likely you have uh, to have a transmission of or acquisition of new uh, infection. That's probably, in my view, the best ecological data uh, you could gather, uh, although I'm sure there will be more uh, in, in the future coming from other groups and, and other areas, especially maybe uh, the ones coming from Médecins Sans Frontières projects that are uh, all starting or at planning stages uh, in different countries of Southern and East Africa, uh, Swaziland, Uganda, Malawi, Mozambique, uh, Kenya, uh, and South Africa. Uh, and some of them will be reported by uh, their investigators, in particular Roger Tech, uh, later uh, in this uh, meeting. But what really we would like to know and to see is randomization of, of groups to address the question that I just uh, mentioned earlier, which is what will happen at community level if we treat many more uh, people. Um, for this, clearly, the issue is not only biomedical, but it's complicated or intricated with behavioral uh, pro problems. And so we need to have certainly in this kind of research a combination of the two uh, issues uh, addressed. 
So after having, been, having done the uh, quick uh, survey, uh, although as extensive as I could uh, over the past uh, months or so, uh, I have identified uh, five uh, tr of these trials, uh, either in progress or in planning, serious planning in, in Africa and one in the US, and I'd like to share with you a few features uh, of some of them. Um, they, are, they are basically presented by, uh, not in a specific order, but probably by degree of maturity, according to what the investigators uh, shared with me uh, over the past uh, weeks uh, or even days. Uh, starting by the one I, I know the most, the 12249 uh, INRS uh, TASP trial. It's a cluster randomized trial. It will be in the Schlabilsa sub-district where I just show you the ecological data uh, that were, were presented uh, at Croy. And I will be uh, co-leading this uh, trial with Marie-Louise uh, Newell. Um, basically, we question the issue of testing all members of a community and, and, uh, and starting immediately ART. Uh, and to uh, see whether this could impact on H HIV incidence uh, in this uh, population. Uh, this will be a rural uh, hyper-endemic uh, area of, uh, of uh, South uh, Africa. Uh, and and uh, ultimately, uh, we will uh, try to measure the effect of ARP on the incidence uh, in the general population where uh, we uh, intervene. The trial uh, is a cluster trial, uh, 34 uh, clusters, uh, or pop, uh, com combining a population of about 42,000 uh, adults, uh, including uh, 34,000 uh, negative, according to uh, what we have in terms of uh, estimate today. And the interventions for, uh, uh, for uh, treatment uh, will be uh, at Ripla uh, once uh, daily. Uh, the trial is expected to uh, work in two phases. The first phase, uh, it will start with uh, two by two uh, clusters, so a total of 5,000 uh, adults uh, or 4,000 uh, negative, in which we will apply three uh, rounds of home testing and, and the offer of, uh, of services. Um, we have several uh, outcomes that are not incidents in this first phase on uptake, uh, behavioral changes, sexual partnerships, ART uptake and program uh, retention. Um, and the, the good news uh, is that this trial is really now uh, fully on its way, uh, registered, uh, and more importantly, uh, March 23rd, got its final approval and, and the beginning of field work has been uh, almost uh, immediate, so we are really uh, on the way. Uh, with very, very good community mobilization that is really um, apparently after two weeks uh, helping a lot uh, in the positive response of the communities uh, to, uh, to the trial uh, immediate uh, action. The second trial is, uh, is PopArt HPTN 071. Uh, Carl uh, presented it in detail, so maybe I will uh, go in less details, especially also because uh, although the primary investigators are not here, uh, at least one investigator, uh, Christopher Fraser, uh, is uh, here. I don't know if he's in the room, but he will report uh, to uh, the, this uh, the audience uh, in the coming uh, two days. But it's a large cluster randomized trial of combination prevention strategies. The package uh, is uh, listed uh, here. It will heavily rely on uh, community HIV uh, providers and as uh, it was said earlier, it has uh, three arms with two arms of interventions, full pop-art and uh, pop-art without uh, uh, immediate uh, uh, treatment. And the clusters will be both in Zambia and South Africa, and certainly from what we uh, learned, this is the largest of all the trials uh, that uh, will be uh, conducted. The primary outcome is two-year uh, incidence, but there will be also uh, other outcomes uh, in the field of social uh, sciences. Uh, many uh, aspects will also be documented as well as in uh, clinical uh, research. Uh, the last information I received from Richard is that the, this year was really the preparation uh, year with the intent to begin field implementation within, uh, within a, a year. Moving to the third uh, of these trials, the Botswana Combination Prevention Project. Uh, Max Essex shared this information with me uh, very uh, recently. 
um, uh, 30 communities in Botswana, uh, two times 15 pairs. Uh, and the very important difference with other trials is that the uh, intervention will focus on uh, subjects with high HIV RNA. Uh, and that will be uh, the probably the only trial from what I see uh, that will uh, enter um, uh, intervention uh, uh, this way, again, in the context of a larger uh, uh, package. A uh, fairly large uh, uh, trial, uh, again, in terms of population. Um, objective, uh, again, on HIV uh, incidents and a four-year project uh, uh, that will be, uh, I believe, the protocol will be shared again by Vladimir Novitsky uh, sometimes uh, during, this, uh, during this meeting. Uh, finally, uh, two uh, more uh, projects uh, on, in preparation or in design. Uh, the first one by David Celentano um, uh, in uh, Tanzania in the Iringa uh, area. Uh, it's also a combination prevention uh, intervention. It has specific aims that resemble, to a certain extent, many of the ones that I presented uh, before. Um, it's a two-arm community randomized trial that is contemplated uh, at the moment with, again, the cumulative HIV incidence as primary uh, outcome and a sample size uh, I would qualify as moderate to high uh, compared to the previous ones that I just uh, showed you. Um, at the moment, uh, the trial is still in this uh, preparation uh, phase, but uh, could uh, be launched uh, reasonably uh, soon uh, in the coming uh, months. The final uh, project that is maturing uh, has also the acronym SEARCH, so it looks like two uh, trials are using the same uh, acronym, or, 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 but with different uh, meanings. Uh, search partners are, are numerous, uh, and the search project uh, should take place in uh, Uganda and perhaps uh, uh, Kenya. Uh, it's again an intervention uh, trial uh, with um, uh, clusters, uh, community uh, intervention communities, and control uh, communities over a four to five year uh, uh, project. Um, and uh, I don't think the timelines here for starting uh, from what Diane uh, has told me uh, are totally, uh, totally uh, finalized. So to be really fully comprehensive, uh, I should add the HPTN 065 um, because it is also a trial. Uh, it is um, uh, chaired by uh, WAFA, but the difference with all the others is that it will be uh, in the US. Um, I believe it's uh, quite advanced uh, now from what I've uh, checked uh, on the site and, and the slides that uh, Wafa uh, shared with me. It starts with some observational uh, uh, phase on expanded HIV testing, but then uh, there is randomization at the level of linkage to care, uh, viral suppression, and prevention for uh, uh, positives. Uh, and the intervention areas are in New York uh, and, and D.C. So to really finish, um, I would say that uh, the mapping that I just showed that may not be exhaustive, maybe we'll need an update at the end of this meeting, shows us that for the two or three years, 2012, 2014, we did the questions of feasibility and acceptability will be uh, critical and will be uh, probably well addressed by uh, at least some of the trials that I just described. And some of the concerns that we all have on attrition, uh, harm versus benefits, uh, and cost and sustainability uh, may uh, start to be uh, pinpointed by some of the trials uh, that uh, will be uh, rolling uh, out in, in the coming uh, years. My uh, end uh, slide is uh, the, the, these trials uh, put some practical questions for, for research uh, in two perspectives. Uh, the first is that there is a need for collaborative networks, and certainly what Julio has put together by this uh, meeting is an example of, of, of networking that will be uh, needed. Uh, as clearly, after what I showed you, there are differences in prevention uh, packages that are uh, in the different trials. The way uh, these packages will be delivered, the outcomes and the populations that will be um, uh, surveyed or investigated. 
But overall, I feel that there is enough overall study design so that all of this makes at this stage a comprehensive uh, set of, uh, of trials. And clearly also what is going to be uh, es essential uh, and very difficult to address is this link between biomedical and behavioral research in basically all the trials that I just uh, uh, described. Finally, I would like to say that although this looks like a very optimistic and encouraging uh, agenda, uh, at least from what I gathered from investigators, most investigators uh, say that uh, the need for funding is uh, not uh, entirely uh, fulfilled at the moment. Um, and I can even talk for myself as uh, our trial is not uh, funded beyond uh, the first two years. So there is a lot of uh, excitement uh, a lot of uh, work already on design of very innovative studies, uh, but the funding is still uh, tight uh, to really uh, fulfill this agenda. And we have to remember that we have been extraordinarily happy to have three extremely well designed and conducted studies on uh, male circumcision. Uh, we have been uh, happy and still uh, with problems with many uh, good trials of large scale with microbicides. So we may need several trials in this field uh, as well with proper uh, research and proper uh, funding. So the alphabet of HIV prevention um, has many uh, letters now, and here we are uh, looking at the T uh, uh, letter for, 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 for treatment. Uh, but I like to use this uh, slide uh, that Bernard Hirschel puts uh, very often in his uh, talk uh, to showing us that we have a long way uh, in front of us and, and the road uh, may not be uh, so uh, easy. Thank you very much.